Hey guys, welcome back to the game room. As you can see, I'm in black tie for such an auspicious and momentous event, which is, of course, the game room tour. Several of you have asked for it. I've received questions about what's down here. There's over 2,800 games, over 50 systems, ranging from the most common to the most obscure you could imagine. So, I hope you have your uh, formal black tie attire ready yourself. We're going to go around the room so you can get your bearings and see what it's like down here. And then I'm going to go through each section one at a time and let you see kind of the more interesting items that are here. I'll point them out to you. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. It's important to help grow the channel. And thank you so much, and I hope you enjoy it. Roll the credits. Okay guys, the first area you see here is my uh, my sort of retro gaming area. We have a uh, Sony Trinitron TV. This was a, uh, a thrift store find from many years ago. Uh, it's been a good TV. I think I paid 20 bucks for it. it it's, it's been trusted and tried and true. Uh, the only issue I have with it is uh, it's kind of the bevel here is sort of beat up. Or not the bevel, the bezel. Um, and dirty. I've tried to find paint for that, or I've thought about getting like a vinyl wrap for it or something like that, but so far I haven't had any luck. If you guys know anything about how to take care of that or maybe a matching paint color, let me know. Um, to the left of that, this is a, uh, a sort of a catch-all shelf of things that don't really fit very well. Uh, we have the Grand Theft Auto 4 Collector's Edition next to the uh, what do they call that? Uh, Windjammers Collector's Edition. And then the, the Bloodborne store display. I, uh, I, I didn't really, I won't say I stole it from Best Buy, but uh, one day when uh, I was picking up, I guess it was my pre-order of Bloodborne, uh, they made me wait around like two hours while they were trying to put it in the system. So I just picked up this standee and asked if I could have it. And they said they basically didn't care. So I just, I just walked out of the store with it. Uh, it's pretty cool. We have some PC games here, uh, small box PC games uh, of various types. You can see here, we'll get a little closer. A lot of these are uh, like Japanese import games that are indie games, like Dojin games you can only buy from the, the manufacturer. They're pretty... Pretty interesting to have. They're a fun experience, especially trying to get them to work on a uh, modern computer. This is a, uh, uh, a copy of Zero Ranger, which is a fantastic shmup. Um, it's only out digitally, but I was able to piece together a, uh, a physical copy of it just because I like having it on the shelf. These were from uh, IndieBox, which was a, uh, a manufacturer that um, did like a monthly subscription box where you could have them ship a new PC game that had only ever been uh, digital up to that point to you. Of course, I have to mention The Binding of Isaac, probably one of my favorite games of all time. This is the PAL uh, 
Flash version, the early version of the game, right after Wrath of the Lamb came out, um, before they did the Rebirth version of it. Uh, and so this is fun. It's a lot harder. It's got a low frame rate compared to the, the newer versions of the game. So it's, it's challenging. Um, and then we have, of course, some Dreamcast stuff here. Uh, Canon Spike, of course, is highly sought after. I, I found that at my wife's house. Her brother had it when he was little, and it was just kind of hanging out there. Um, they let me have it. It's pretty exciting. Gigawing, of course. Uh, some of these are Japanese imports, of course, that I picked up on my trip to Japan. Um, here's Shinmu, of course. Uh, I do have the U.S. version of this, but it's disc only. It's in here with the Japanese version. Um, I pick, like They're like a dollar in Japan, or they were when I picked them up. Uh, a lot of these were Stormwind, which is a fantastic indie uh, horizontal shmup for Dreamcast. And then here we have some like loose PC games um, that I've picked up over the years. I don't usually like to pick up loose jewel cases for PC, but... What can you do? And then some more Japanese sort of indie stuff that uh, you can only only get if you have the right contacts. <laughs> they have stores in Japan that just sell these like indie games, you know, for 10, 20 bucks a piece. Um, these are all of the... Uh, um, Toho shmups. Uh, once again on PC, pretty cool. The covers are very nondescript and sort of difficult to uh, determine what they are, um, but they are uh, they're fun games, a bit challenging. Here's the rest of them. Hellsinker. This is an interesting one. <laughs> this is one of the most complicated games <laughs> probably ever made. It's a combination shmup fighting puzzle game uh the guy that has the world record in this game um his quote about it is uh when it asked his opinion of it he said i have no idea how to play this game and they just laughed uh i've, I've played it some but it is crazy the guy that developed this um it's like a fever dream of a game uh he he made it and he released it for download and then at like one convention he had copies pressed and printed that he gave out. I don't know how many there are, but this is this is one of them. Uh, the game has recently received a uh, release on Steam, so you can download it and play it. But as far as I know, the only physical way to have it is like if you were at that convention and the guy just sort of gave it to you. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to have that. Uh, I bought it off a guy. I don't think he knew what he had. Um, it's like I think I paid him like eight bucks for it. And that included shipping from Japan. So, very interesting. I'm going to pause the video here to, to readjust. Give me one second. All right, guys. I had to shift to, to handheld mode from my uh, tripod. I wasn't able to get down low enough to show you this stuff. Um, here's some boxed Atari games. Some of the big ones. Combat. Everybody has it. Kaboom is probably my favorite Atari game. And then, of course... Minor 2049er, that's a bit of a rare one. Um, Pitfall, and then the tons of loose games. Of course, we have a Bachelor Party there. That's a that's a scandalous one. <laughs> hope my hope my daughter doesn't find that one down there. But it's so primitive and low bit. I don't know that she would even be able to tell what's going on. Um, there's also Custer's Revenge. I picked that up at the Southeast Game Exchange. Uh, I didn't really want it, but uh, the guy made me such a good deal on it, I couldn't pass it up. Also, we have Hero here. Um, sorry for the, the shaking. Hero is one of the best 2600 games by far. It's upside down. Uh, great game. A lot of fun. Holds up really well even today. Uh, so, uh, if you can pick this one up, I think it's about a $50 Atari game, which is like crazy. That's... That's how much like 50 Atari games are supposed to cost. Um, if you have a chance to pick that one up, I would definitely recommend it. And then, of course, we have uh, River Raid, another fantastic game down here.
I liked the Atari 2600. It was a little bit before my time, but I did have one when I was younger and thoroughly enjoyed playing it. The games still hold up. They're quick plays. You know, you spend five, ten minutes with them and then kind of move on. But uh, they're still great. Down here is my Game Gear collection. Uh, if you watch one of my other videos, I mentioned how I picked this up from a, a girl who... She was trying to get a complete set, and uh, she sort of... She needed money, so she she sold the set to me and my, my buddy. And uh, I wasn't super into the Game Gear, but... Um, I wanted to help her out, and she did have some of the heavy hitters. Uh, I pulled some out a little bit beforehand. We have, like, Arena, Maze of Death, um, which is supposed to be a, a pretty decent game. It's exclusive to the uh, the Game Gear. Uh, Defender of Oasis. Um, it's another kind of hard one to find. I don't know anything about it. Like I said, I haven't really played any of these games yet. Uh, Shining, Shining Force on the Game Gear. I wasn't even aware that there was a Shining Force game on the Game Gear, but here you go. Let me know if you guys have played any of these and if they're any good. Um, Tales, that's one of the exclusives to the system. Um, it's supposed to be fairly decent. Uh, I'm not the biggest Sonic fan. I do like Sonic games, but uh, this one's hard to find. And then Vampire. Uh, Master of Darkness, which I think is a, like a Castlevania ripoff. So I love Castlevania, so I'm excited to even try a ripoff game of it. Um, anyway, there's there's just a handful of games on the Game Gear that are like a hundred dollars plus, and then uh, and then one like super rare, the rarest game on the system is actually Pete Sampras Tennis. Uh, and so hopefully I can maybe find that one day and finish off the set. I'm not sure if I won't even bother with it. Uh, we'll have to dive into it a little bit more and see if it's worth it. I've only ever played about five Game Gear games in my entire life. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, here's my Trinitron, little beat up. Next to it is this uh, portable air conditioner. I do have air conditioning down here um, in the ceiling, but because the thermostat is upstairs, uh, it doesn't know what the temperature is, temperature is down here. So upstairs it might say, you know, 71 degrees, so the air turns off, but down here it's like 77. So I got this to just kind of take the load off and help with some of the humidity down here. Um, I hate that it has this hose carrying the, uh, the heat to the outside, but I don't know what to do about that. If you have any idea of how to hide this, sort of in this little alcove here with the only window in the room. And the, uh, the chair I sit in here is this X rocker. Uh, it's the one with the speakers built in and the, uh, the subwoofer that, that vibrates while you sit in it. Um, People kind of like knocked this chair. I don't know. It was sort of expensive, but I've enjoyed it. Uh, I uh, played, um, what was it called? Death Stranding uh, in it. And it was a really nice experience. The atmosphere as you were just walking around, kind of the speakers next to your head. I, I really enjoyed it. These posters you see here, um, these are from Etsy. And uh, they're made by a company called Crossmac. They're really nice. They have like this 1940s sort of movie kind of late art deco look to them. Uh, and they're on like, I think they're screen printed on like hand lathed paper. Uh, they're really nice. We have the Emerald Herald here um, from Dark Souls 2, Fear the Old Blood from Bloodborne, uh, the Near Automata, Automata. I guess you would say like an automaton, so automata. And then, not to whip you around too fast, over here in the corner, there's the, the Death Stranding one, um, as I mentioned a little earlier. A Last of Us standee. Uh, I found that at a yard sale for a dollar. Seems weird that somebody would like go out of their way to, to find a, uh, a standee or get one from a GameStop or something and then just like get rid of it at GameStop. And then a little collage I, hear of some, I have of some, some of my favorite games from maybe 10 or 12 years ago. Here's a chair that sits here in case somebody needs it. Uh, it's usually what I sit in when I play my arcade unit, which you'll see in a minute. And then up here, tucked away, we have like an Atari 2600 box. Um, that's a, what is that? A, a, a Steam, uh, I forget what they called it. The Steam TV or whatever. Um, Steam Link. 
that allowed you to connect your PC to your TV and like stream remotely. Uh, it worked okay. The PSVR and then the Xbox 360, Wii, PlayStation, Xbox One, Wii U, and television. PS2, PS2. One of those is a, a Japanese model. Um, most of these console boxes have consoles in them. They're like the backups to the, the ones I have out and hooked up. Um, then my big box PC collection. I, I love big box PC stuff. It's, it's hard to find these days, but I really do like it. Um, Seventh Guest, Age of Empires, of course, is great. Gish was a limited run games release. Uh, Freddy Farkas, Frontier Psych Pharmacist. That's sealed from back in the day. Pretty cool. Lots of Diablo 2 stuff. Phantasmagoria is probably my favorite um, lot, big box PC game I have. Love it. It's a great adventure game. Uh, super campy and fun, but holds up really, really well. Of course, Miss is a classic. Planescape Torment. I'm not the hugest fan of CRPGs. That's supposed to be one of the best ones. Um, I finished it, but eh, I don't know that I would say it's like a top 10 game of all time, like people used to call it. Then here's my Neo Geo MVS stuff. I do have a Neo Geo MVS that's been consoleized. Blazing Star, which is a great shmup. Um, there's a company out there that makes these replica shot boxes um, that are great. The MVS didn't have shot boxes like this. Everything just came in a cardboard package um, because it uh, was wasn't for retail. You know, it was meant to be for uh, used in for business purposes for people that had the MVS arcade unit. Um, we have Magical Drop Three here. This is my favorite puzzle game of all time, even beating out Tetris. Um, it's pretty cool. They're uh, like cascading gems at the top. You have to collect and sort of match them up to clear them out. But it's it's competitive. Uh, you're fighting against the uh, the opponent, and as you clear them, they uh, drop uh, more on the opponent's side. And uh, it's pretty cool. I love it. It can get really fast paced, and it's strange. It was one of these games I was naturally good at. I didn't play it till about four or five years ago, and I was able to like one credit clear the arcade mode on normal, like on my first try. It was amazing. It's amazing how much more you like something when you're just naturally good at it. And this is the multi-cart for, uh, for the Neo Geo MVS. It has most of the games you'd want to play on it. Some of the more interesting ones are missing, but it's still pretty good. And then these are the, the Neo Geo um, limited run games releases. These are like PS4 games and packaged in these shock boxes. Um, and I kind of opt for these when the cost of getting the, the real thing is, is, is too much. You know, here we have the Metal Slug anthology with all the Metal Slug games. If I were to buy those for the MVS, it would be, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars. I'm just not going to 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 splurge on that at the moment. Um, like I said, I like to, to play more than I like to collect. And then, of course, here we have a stack of limited run cards. I don't even know what to do with them. Um, kind of really dislike those. If you've watched my other videos, you've heard me voice my or air my grievances about them. Uh, Velocity, X2, uh, these are all just kind of collector's editions in here. Fire Emblem's Fates, Fire Emblem Fates, good game. Uh, wasn't my favorite Fire Emblem game, but however, Three Houses, the collector's edition back there, that was a fantastic game. Uh, that's probably one of my favorite games I've even played on the Switch. Uh, loved it. If you haven't tried it and you like strategy games and tactical games uh, with interesting stories and fun characters, that, that's one you should try out. Uh, here we have Bravely Second, the Collector's Edition. I did not like the Bravely games. I didn't like Bravely Default. I didn't like Bravely Second. Uh, the little chibi characters just didn't do it for me. And I felt like the game was just wasting my time. Uh, so much grinding and the characters were annoying and constantly yelling all the time. I just, ooh, it was really a turnoff. Um, hidden behind it, it's hard to see back there. But there's a Game Boy carrying case that has a Game Boy in it and all the little adapters and stuff. It, it's pretty cool. This is actually a real oddity right here. This is um, a strategy guide for a game called Ledger Domain, uh, which is an indie game that a guy made that's done like rogue style um, with like ASCII characters and stuff. And he printed up this copy of the game here. Uh, there's a copy of the game in it and a map and this novel that is like the strategy guide for the game 
and he sold it at a convention I was at for like 20 bucks. And uh, I know people online like the game, um, but I have, I didn't, as far as I know, this is like the only physical copy of it that ever existed. Over here we have the uh, the Sharp X68000 version of the Cotton Reboot game, of course, with the Tea Time Cup uh, that blocks everybody's view. And then behind it we have the Zone of the Enders Collector's Edition along with the limited run release of Night Trap on the PS4. And of course more refuse that gets piled to the side. Dragon's Lair, Ring Fit Adventure... Xenoblade Chronicles X, the Collector's Edition, and Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I loved the first Xenoblade Chronicles that came out on the Wii. These two I just couldn't get into. Man, the characters are so annoying, and I didn't like traversing around the worlds. I know that's what people love, um, but I just couldn't get into it. Esperade Psy, um, a great shmup by Cave, uh, mixed with some Syngrin Kagura stuff here. These games are okay. I kind of played them with my friends and enjoyed the... Uh, the shooting aspects and the combat of it. Enter the Gungeon. Uh, Darius Burst. Um, I haven't gotten around to this. I haven't opened it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. This is the uh, Psycho collection of all the Psycho shmups uh, that came out on the uh, the Switch. I'm not going to show you the front of this box. It has some uh, pretty scandalous artwork in it. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know it was going to look like that when I ordered it. Um so it's it's not something I want to display necessarily, but um, these games are fun. I like the Psycho games, but the Switch versions have so much input delay. We're talking like six, seven, eight, nine frames of lag, so you can't even hardly play some of them. I just ordered the PS4 versions that came out that are supposed to be better, so we'll see if they how they how they come along. Um, then of course we have the the Game Chasers Volume Four DVD that I had autographed. I needed to get the other autograph from uh, Billy, but um, I forgot to take it with me. The wood-grained uh, uh, Game Gear stand-in that I mentioned in my other video. Since every Game Gear in the world is broken, uh, I use this to, to kind of emulate the Game Gear games I have over on the other side of the room. Battle Garega, this is the limited run version. Uh, this is also over here, the... Um, the Japanese version of it, the limited release. I bought this because I'm, I'm a huge fan of the game and really wanted it. And it turns out this like $120 collector's edition had a stupid download code in it. So it doesn't even have the physical copy of the game, which is super annoying. Uh, so I just left it sealed. I thought the artwork was cool, but I was super excited when Limited Run Games released it. And uh, they actually did have a physical copy in it. So two collector's editions of Battle Garega. Can't go wrong. Um, these are the... Uh, the fight sticks I have for my Neo Geo MVS that's consoleized. We have the traditional Neo Geo colors and a completely black and white ver version here. Uh, these are awesome. Uh, a guy made these for me. Um, they're super heavy duty. They weigh about like six pounds a piece. Um, and I just love them. Down here we have uh, my handhelds, or some of them, the ones I use regularly with the, the Game Boy DMG and the Game Boy Color and the, of course, broken... Game Gear back there, PSP, PS Vita, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Micro, DS, my uh, 2DS XL, which I've been playing, is upstairs. Sorry, I forgot to bring it down here for you guys. Let me pause and shift here. Um, Undertale, the collector's edition for that. That's fun. Uh, I enjoyed it. I did the pacifist run on it my first time through, and... Got a very interesting experience with it. I kind of want to go back through again and try to play it uh, and actually be aggressive. Uh, Death Smiles, the collector's edition for the Xbox 360. Fantastic shmup. One of my favorites. Maybe my favorite horizontal shmup of all time. Uh, Persona 4, Dancing All Night uh, for the Vita. Another cool rhythm game. And then the, the Dark Souls uh, Steelbook that came out for the 360. Uh, I drove... I pre-ordered that and they... Didn't keep my copy. They sold it to somebody. And I drove to like probably 15 game stops within a 100 mile radius of me looking for it. And nobody had it. And then I drove to this one game stop in like what you would call the the hood. And they had like 20 copies of it. Um, so it was pretty cool. I should have picked them up. Uh, all of the copies. But back then I wasn't really concerned with holding on to stuff for prosperity's sake. Shifting again for you. The Hollow Knight 
collector's edition on the PS4, and then we have the the Darius Cosmic Collection, both the arcade and the console version back there. Uh, it's in one big box. It's a very cool box. I think that was from uh, Strictly Limited Games. Um, happy to have that. I haven't opened it yet. I need to get more into the Darius series. I've only played the first one. And then down here, sorry guys, we're like low. We're we're right on the ground. The Intellivision games. My Intellivision's busted at the moment. I think one of the chips has gone out on it. Um, I need to I need to work on that because I do like the Intellivision box to NES Advantage and my arcade stick for my Xbox 360. There's the Castlevania Anniversary Collection that was in my last pickups video. Then, sorry, shifting again. The Celeste Collector's Edition along with some manuals and a certain NES guide made by Pat the NES Punk, Pat Contry. Great, uh, great book. And then there's where I keep my, my controllers. Moving along. This is a complete Vectrex set. This is every game released for the Vectrex. We have 3D Crazy Coaster, 3D Mindstorm, 3D Narrow Escape, all of the light pin games, everything that came out. There are two super rare games for it that most collectors don't really consider part of the collection. They are the uh, um, Mr. Boston, which is a, a, a redo of Clean Sweep, which is just right here, um, that I think a liquor store in Boston, Massachusetts, like had the game reskinned that they gave out for a, uh, a Christmas party or something like that. It's a, you know, multiple thousand dollar game. And then there's uh, Mindstorm, which is the game that's built into the system. Uh, there's Mindstorm 2. Uh, the one built into the system has a bug in it. If you get to a certain level, the game crashes. So they patched it and re-released it. I don't really consider that part of the collection. Um, here we have... Uh, the uh, Fred, I guess his name's Fred Kelly, the multi cart with all of the Vectrex games, plus a lot of homebrews, and then Dark Tower, which was a, a cool game that was supposed to come out for the Vectrex based on a, a board game, but it, it just never did. And this is the recreation of that. Here's a little couple plug and plays. These are all of the uh, overlays that go with the Vectrex games, as well as the, the 3D um, wheels that go in the 3D imager, which is right here. Um, this is a really interesting thing to have. The Vectrex, in case you didn't know, was one of the first consoles to have a, a headset, almost like a virtual reality headset, and it had a spinning disc that sat in front of your eyes. And if you've ever used those old 3D glasses that have like the red and blue lenses in them, this is basically that, but it would spin with the strobe effect from the Vectrex console and create a 3D image. Very cool. It's hard to find. Uh, the guy that owned a lot of this stuff that I bought it from, his father was a huge Vectrex fan, and uh, the box got damaged. So um, they, they moved the 3D headset into this other storage box, and I'm happy to have it. It works. Super cool effect. It's kind of like magic eye, so you have to cross your eyes a little bit to to get it to work um, and it can give you a rocking headache that won't go away for days um, but it's still really cool to have here's my limited sega cd collection uh, there's some common games in here uh, but some fun ones as well mega race this one's kind of hard to find it uh it's not super expensive but you just don't see it very often um, panic which is a, a fun game uh, where he plays a little boy going through these random rooms and you basically just click buttons and it's a trial and error game. And its selling point was like the many gruesome ways the boy could get killed. <laughs> and uh, I like that one. I was never able to finish it. I rented it when I was a kid. And then like an idiot, I like loaned it to my buddy while it was on rental and he finished it and then returned it to me about 40 minutes before my dad had to drive me to return it to Blockbuster. So I never finished it. I haven't played it since then. Uh, the limited run re-release of Monkey Island. I wish they would do more of these. Uh, I think that's really cool. The Sega CD games are fun. They're hard to get your hands on. Imagine if they did Snatcher or something. They could sell it for like 300 bucks, and they sell it in no time. Here's one of the heavy hitters on the Sega CD. This is Shining Force CD. To go along with my Shining Force Game Gear game. Uh, cool game. Uh, 
I've only played it for a little bit. Um, I need to dive into it uh, and, and play it some more. I basically just played it to test it out. The CD backup, which gives more RAM for the Sega CD. And then here's my also limited Sega Saturn collection. I, I love the Sega Saturn, but man, it's pricey to collect for. It and the Neo Geo can, uh, can set you back a bit. Here's a stall. Great game. Um, you can always recognize it in anybody's collection because they forgot to print the, the name on the, the spine. Uh, Dragon Force. Uh, working Designs game. This game's actually really fun. A lot of Working Designs games are, are have their difficulty ramped up, but this one's fair, and uh, you can beat it. First time I played it, I played it with the hardest uh, group of people. I mean, you choose which faction you want to be. I choose the most difficult faction, which focused just on healing, and I was, I was able to get through it, no problem. Um, of course, Nights into Dreams is fun. For people, for this is a platform where it's not. If you've never played this, it's kind of like a side-scrolling racing game. Uh, very cool. And then down here we have some kind of smaller little uh, Sega CD stuff. Soul Fees, the Classics Collection. This is the uh, Christmas Nights into Dreams sampler for the Sega Saturn. I love this. I try to play it every Christmas. Um, I wish I had the the slip cover for it, but this is just loose. Um, still, though, a lot of fun. It won't go back on the shelf. There we go. And then we have my import Sega Saturn collection. These are kind of uh, lined up by games that I can play because uh, I don't know how to read Japanese. <laughs> and then everything else. Uh, there's so many games that I'm just like, I want to play it, but I can't do it. Uh, this game here is, I don't know what the name of this is, uh, but this game was created for people that are, uh, that have auditory issues that can, uh, or that are, sorry, that are visually impaired. So this game is all auditory. It's a, it's like a puzzle adventure game that you, you play and solve by just listening. Um, very cool. I would love to experience this, but I don't, I don't read or speak Japanese hardly at all. I took like two years of it and high school and didn't pay well enough attention and squandered my my time with it uh, but it's such a cool idea such a amazing thing that they would do something like that it's you hear a lot these days about accessibility in video games and it's cool to know they were doing that back in the the 90s here's my 3do collection i love the 3do i had a 3do a few years after it came out i was in a, a babbage's games if you guys remember those and uh, they had it on clearance. I got it for like $40, and the games were like two bucks a piece. Of course, I, like an idiot, traded it all away towards a Nintendo 64. Um, but I've been able to pick up some stuff. Monster Manor is an interesting, uh, like, Doom clone. Uh, it, it's good. Uh, Road Rash, this is a great version of the game. And the first place I ever played a Need for Speed game was on the 3DO, and it blew my mind. Uh, I remember turning around a corner and, like, jumping because it looked so real, I thought that I was about to crash. <laughs> uh, Twisted's fun. This is like a FMV, full motion video uh, game show. You can play with your friends, and they ask you to do little mini games and... I think maybe answer some trivia stuff. It's a lot of fun. I played it with my mom when I was younger and we had a good time. I played it with my wife a few years ago and she, in not too many words, said like this was the worst thing that's ever happened to her when she had to play it. <laughs> she did not She did not have a good time. Um, here's my Turbo Graphics and PC Engine stuff. Uh, love it. Of course, everybody does. Um, anyway, we have like Alien Crush and Blazing Lasers. Of course, it's a fantastic shmup. Uh Devil's Crush and Double Dungeons. That game's essentially unplayable and absolutely terrible. Legendary Axe. Ninja Spirit, Splatterhouse, um, Turrican, and then some just kind of Galaga 88 and the original Fighting Street. That was the that's Street Fighter 1, guys, in case you've never seen it. It's uh it's terrible. Absolutely brutal. Brutally difficult and terrible. This is the pack-in for the Turbo Duo that has Gates of Thunder, Bonk's Adventure, Bonk's Revenge, and also, uh, secretly, Bomberman. Um, fantastic. Maybe the best pack-in of all time. Loom, which is a LucasArts adventure game, kind of like Monkey Island, although I liked this one a lot better 
uh, when I was a kid, I had this on PC. It was one of my first CD-ROM games, and I got stuck like an hour into it and didn't know what to do. And I was stuck for like two years. And finally, I pulled out the manual, and at the back, it had like a 900 number you could call to get the solution to the puzzles. <laughs> and I like snuck my parents' uh, debit card and asked if I could... I think they were at work or my dad was at work and I asked if or I, I was like, it'll only be a dollar or two or something like that. And I think I ended up like calling them like 20 times that day. My dad was a little mad. He made me do a bunch of extra chores to to pay him back for it, which is the right thing to do. I should have I should have known better. Uh, but it makes me wonder like kids playing phone games and with microtransactions and just how quickly they could rack up these huge charges doing stuff like that. It's, it's scary. Scary. And then, of course, we have... Uh, what is this? PC Genjin. Um, This is... PC Dingen. That's it. Uh, very cool shmup. Um, it's called Airzonk uh, in the United States. A lot of fun. Cute them up. Wacky. Fun. Super soldier. Superstar soldier. Um, anyway, I love, I love the PC engine and I love the turbo graphics. Everybody does it of all the consoles. I, I know of it probably has like the highest fun factor, uh, for games, uh, across the board. Whereas like, you know, maybe the, the Sega master system, the average game is like a six out of 10. I think the, the Neo, not the Neo Geo, the turbo graphics and PC engine is probably like a seven and a half or so. Uh, Neo Geo Pocket Color Collection, Dangan Fever on. These are all limited run games, re-releases of, of, of older games. Um, the Samurai Showdown Collection. Uh, these are over here as opposed to the, the case over there because um, I needed to fill up this space in this, this uh, shelf that I just bought. Um, some other little collections. This is the Death Smiles new collection on the PS4. I have Death Smiles 1. I've never played Death Smiles 2, but it's Christmas based, which seems cool. There's not very many Christmas games out there. I think it'll be fun. And then some other Children of Morta, the Vasara collection, the R Type Dimensions collection that has R Type and R Type 2. I love R Type. Super hard, difficult. Um, anyway, but it's great. Uh, it's worth the worth the time putting it in, putting into it uh, to, uh, to, to learn to master the game. And then here's a little Lego. Uh, thing my daughter made me she's caught me playing uh elden ring and she saw this area where it kind of goes from a forested area to a lava looking area and so she she made that and then i have kind of how i keep track of the games i'm playing through like modern retro special portable things like that we'll get into that someday and then just some notebooks where i keep track of notes as i'm playing if i want to do a game review oh, excuse me while i get up i'm getting old guys uh, Holy Diver and Metal Storm, those are NES collector's editions uh, that are re-releases. Happy to have those. Those are, those are games that are kind of out of my budget for, uh, for buying the original versions. And then we have, of course, the, uh, the, the drop ceiling panel that always falls in. There's always a hole there, and I can't get it to stay. I, I've even pushed this one in and taped it, but it, it always falls down. It's super annoying. There's the... Uh, box for the Ann Bernick, uh Game Gear uh, wood grain console I showed you earlier. I love just how colorful and vibrant it is up there. It, uh, it really fits in well with the, uh, the, uh, the boxed MSX here <laughs> to go along with the 3DO. Um, and there's my Atari Jaguar. I do like the Atari Jaguar a lot. Uh, it's a terrible console, but it's so campy and the games can be a lot of fun if you're, you're into bad games. And then that's a, a boxed N64. Um, I found that at a, a yard sale and a community yard sale uh, where like every every house had put like a, a set of balloons on their mailbox. And um, it was late in the day. It was like, you know, one o'clock or something. And uh, I turned down this, what looked like to be a dead end, uh, just to, to turn my car around to get out of the neighborhood. And there was a, a house at the end of the, the dead end that you never would think was back there and they had balloons on the mailbox. So I went inside and it was like two giant fold out tables full of boxed consoles and console games. And, uh, this was included in it. 
And he's like, oh, my grandkids pulled it out one time and played it. And it's just been sitting in the closet. And he's like, you can just have it. Just take it all away. Of course, I couldn't do that. That wasn't fair. I, I try to be good and I believe in karma. So I, I kind of told him what it was all worth. And he said, oh, it'll, it's too much work to, to try to sell it on eBay for that. And so I made him an offer of uh, several hundred dollars for all of it. And uh, it, was all, it was all I had on me. And it was getting late. And he told me not to go to the ATM. So I ended up with it. Um, but I didn't flip any of it. I kept it all. I wouldn't flip a deal like that. Uh, I said, I believe in karma. Um, here's my boxed NES stuff. You know, all the Lolo games. There's the Always Awakening that was in a recent pickups video. Crash in the Boy Street Challenge. This is a fun game. It's like uh, done by the same people that did River City Ransom. <laughs> and uh, it's about these thug kids at these schools that compete in all these hard knocks games uh it's 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 a lot of fun if you haven't played it I, I highly recommend it guardian legend which is one of the really probably one of my favorite games on the nes it's like a mixture of zelda and a shmup a, hor a vertical shmup um really cool really cool um of course you have to have the box legend of zelda that was one of the first games that ever made me fall in love with video games some boxed N64 stuff, Castlevania, Donkey Kong, Mischief Makers. Most of this stuff, I don't really go out of my way to get boxed NES stuff. This, I just kind of came across it. Of course, we have a, a boxed and complete shatter hand here. Um, bought this at a game store, and they had it priced at a really fair price. I couldn't believe it, and he sold it to me along with a bunch of other stuff. And then afterwards, he's like, you got a good deal on that game. I was like, man, you're the one that priced the game. <laughs> <laughs> you're the one that you're the one that put it i think i put it like it 100 bucks or something like that this is a reproduction of sweet home i got this off etsy this guy like knocked this one out of the park it's like a box and the cartridge and cartridge is full of like blood splatters or something like that um this is cool this is basically the really the first resident evil game on the nes um it's a it had survival horror adventure rpg um but it is only in Japanese. In case you guys want to know who made it, it's Darkly Darky Creations. Um, very cool. I've, I've I've finished it before. Uh, I played a ROM of it, and uh, this is the translated version. And I believe that's just that ROM put on a a cartridge. But I want to get back into it. Um, Scat and Shadow of the Ninja. Ooh, scat, yeah. These are uh, the limited run games, re-releases of these. Here's Rekka. This is a another reproduction. Um, this was released in Japan on the Famicom. Uh, it's like one of the fastest, most manic shooters I've ever seen, and it's amazing that the NES can handle it. Um, anyway, I picked up the uh, a reproduction of it, or I got it for free from a game store that didn't want to sell it or something, and then I bought some box just to, to put it in... Uh, I thought it would look cool on the shelf. These kind of reproduction things. Are, I, I think it's okay if you kind of make them yourself and just to keep them on the shelf and display them because you like the game. Uh, Monster in my pocket, of course. Of course, it's missing the, the little pocket monster that you need to make it complete, but still kind of a fun game. Here's my NES collection. I have a, a lot of NES stuff. It's... One of my favorite consoles to collect for. Um, and then there's... I have some some decent games. I'm, I'm not really going for a full set, but I'm going to go th for a lot of them. This is Adventure Island 3. That one's kind of hard to find these days. And I have them in these plastic collector... Uh, not collector. Plastic protectors um, to try to preserve them. To keep dust off of them. It doesn't really keep dust off the top of them. And it's hard to dust in here. I kind of... I dusted in here earlier for you guys, and uh, man, it's tough to get a Swiffer duster in there. <laughs> I had to do it the old-fashioned way and like reach in with a paper towel. Beer slinger. This is a another homebrew. Um, I'm, this was in a collection I bought from a guy, and uh, this is actually a fun game. If it was a if it had been released back in the day, it would have uh, been a semi-classic on the system, I think. Bomberman. We'll go back over here to keep them in alphabetical order. Everything in here is completely in alphabetical order, guys, by the way. Keep your stuff organized. That way you can find out if something's missing or 
what you have or what you don't have. Of course, you have to have spreadsheets for all that stuff, too. All the Castlevania games, they're fun, but uh, I'm looking forward to playing the anniversary collection versions of them so I can not have to spend a million hours uh, working on them. Uh, regular Contra, Contra Force. It's kind of an obscure one. Um, I traded some extra Vectrex games to a guy for that. Uh, for that, I thought it was a really bad deal for him, but he he was he was happy to do it. And let's see, what do we have in here? Dig Dug Two. I actually like Dig Dug Two a lot. That's a that's a a hidden gem. It um. It's a lot better than Dig Dug 1, in my personal opinion. And then, moving on down here, here's some some of the more heavy hitters. Bomberman 2, of course. Uh, Bucky O'Hare. Chubby Cherub. <sighs> okay. Kickmaster. That's actually a lot of fun. The infamous Action 52. <laughs> it's hard to see it. It's a clear case. Inside a clear case. Swamp Thing. Chiller. Ugh. Interesting one. Mighty Final Fight, uh, Felix the Cat with Manual. Uh, I looked for this game forever. It's a fun game, and I wanted to play it, wanted to have it. For 15 years, I couldn't find it, and then in the last like two years, I've come across like five copies of it. Um, very strange. When it rains, it pours. Toxic Avenger, or Toxic Crusader, sorry. Zombie Nation, which I think is one of the probably top five most expensive games in my collection. An interesting and strange shmup. Uh, you play like as a disembodied samurai head killing zombies in New York City. It's strange. Gargoyles Quest 2. Fun game. Very difficult. Moving over here. Keep going. The rest of the Double Dragon games. Eliminator Boat Duel. This is like a bargain bin game forever. And now it started creeping up in price. Final Fantasy, of course. A real banger. Uh, Fisher Price Firehouse Rescue. <laughs> you know you got it bad when you're buying stuff like that. Real bad. Ghost Lion. This is a, an uncommon game. I haven't played it. Let me know if this is any good. Right next to another uncommon game. Um, Ghoul School. Of course I had to have it in the Nintendo case inside another case, so I can't access it. Sorry about that, guys. But also, haven't played that. Gunsmoke, under under uh, appreciated game. Fantastic shmup on the uh, on the NES. A lot of fun. Really hard. Hatchress. This is an uncommon game. This is almost rare. It's a lot rarer than a lot of these expensive games. Um, it's just Tetris with hats. Uh, but. Of course, because it's it's terrible, nobody wants to play it, so the value just isn't super high like some of these other games. It's certainly, you know, um, more common than, or, or less common than like Chubby Cherub, you know. See all this sort of stuff. Jeopardy, the games you can't escape if you're a collector for the uh, NES, they're everywhere. Um, King's Knight. Remember the story about Final Fantasy and how that was like the last game that Square was going to make and it was supposed to be their last big hurrah and it ended up being a success and saving the company and it's called Final Fantasy, so it's supposed to be the last game. Well, the reason it's going to be their last game is because they kept putting out a bunch of terrible games before that that basically bankrupted the company and King's Knight was one of those games. It is awful. It is truly a terrible game. Uh, it's funny that it's next to Kirby Adventure, which is a fantastic game. <laughs> Oh man, guys, I'm down on my knees in a tuxedo. How is a uh, how do you feel about that? I hope you appreciate it. Legendary Wings. Uh this is a great game. I had this when I was a kid and it came from a uh, a blockbuster. It was one of those uh rentals that they were selling cuz nobody was renting the game anymore. Um and I had it and I played it like crazy. Uh and then of course I had to I had to sell it like all other games I had when I was a kid. Um and so when I bought this I wanted to get a blockbuster copy of the game, and that was that was tricky to track down. Um, it's hard to do stuff like that. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it, but it had some sentimental value. It was important to me to do it. I was glad I was finally able to. It took a while. Um, Mega Man 2. 
Mega Man 2 is the best Mega Man on the system. I don't care really what anybody else says. Mega Man 3 is next up. Of course, you have the Metal Gear games, Metroid. I love Metroid. Um, I wish it had, like, an in-game map. <laughs> I need to get Metroid Zero Mission because uh, it's the Game Boy Advance recreation of it. Um, that does have a map in it, but that, that game's going for, like, 100 bucks now or something. Um, hard to find. The Mutant Virus is another uncommon one. I'm missing Ninja Gaiden 3. Wish I could find that. North and South, a strange Civil War-themed real-time strategy game. Um, Palamedes. This is a really fun puzzle game on the NES that nobody ever talks about. Um, but you will have as much fun with this as you will have playing Tetris. Uh, so if you can find a copy of this, it's, it's kind of uncommon. Uh, give it a shot. It's probably a $10 or $15 game. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Unlike Rampart. Let's focus on Rampart, guys. Does anybody get that joke? Does anybody remember that meme? Anybody here on Reddit? Woody Harrelson, are you out there? Do you uh, you want to talk about Rampart? I'd, I'd, I'd do it with you. This is the 151 games multi-cart that you can get from like uh, various uh, shady distributors that have 150 uh, NES games on it, including like rare ones like Little Samson and stuff. It's It works well, but I've heard rumors that it will like fry your system. I don't know if that's true or not. Let me know. <laughs> I have played it a few times. I found it at a, a store and they just basically gave it to me to get rid of it. Um, they didn't like selling reproduction stuff, so I can't I can't say no to it. Tombs and Treasures, uh, Tombs and Treasure. I picked this up not knowing what it was, and then shortly after I picked it up, there were a whole bunch of YouTubers that did uh, collections videos and like hidden gems and games you you need to play on the NES, and this was in several of them. So it like tripled in value overnight. Of course, how it goes. Everybody's so influenced by the influencers. Just part of it. Still down on my knees. Then way down here at the bottom. These are all the unlicensed games. The Tengen stuff. I don't have the Tengen Tetris, although I kind of wish I did. This is a obscure one, Death Race. Um, done by the same company, uh, AGCI, that did Chiller. Strange. I'm going to talk about those later. And here's my... Famicom stuff. It's I wish there were like end labels um, for these. Dragon Quest. Let's see. Um, Exerion. This is a fun shmup. Uh, only released on the Famicom. I don't believe it ever came out on the NES. It also came out on the uh, MSX computer. Final Fantasy II. Ice Climber. Kid Dracula. See, I have it. Told you guys. <laughs> it's actually a lot of fun. Mother, the original... Um, this is the, if you've ever played Earthbound, this is the, uh, it's actually uh, Mother 2. This is the first one. I've never been able to play it. Like I said, I don't speak Japanese. Um, Princess Tomato in the Salad Kingdom or whatever. This is the Famicom version of that. Um, Quarth. This is strange. It's like a shmup puzzle game that's a mixture of uh, uh, a vertical shmup and like Tetris where you have to like shoot blocks to to fill in lines to, to make these barriers disappear. This is a, a fantastic game. Um, and then, oh no, oh no guys, we're in a situation where things are getting in all sorts of disarray. Um, this is Road Fighter. This is a fun Konami racing game. Uh, much better than like Spy Hunter or something like that, but uh, still inexpensive at the time of this. Uh, I haven't played the NES version, or the sorry, the Famicom version, but um, it is kind of like uh, uh, an early game. It reminds me of a lot of the MSX stuff, and I believe I played this on the MSX. I'm redoing Rockman 3, Spy vs. Spy, all the Mario games, including this one. You always hear about uh, how Doki Doki Panic was... Uh, 
a different game and they rebranded it as Super Mario 2 in the United States. Well, after they rebranded it as Super Mario 2 in the United States, they re-released that version back into Japan, uh, just called Super Mario USA. Pretty interesting. Um, Terra Cresta. They just released a sequel to that like 35 years later. And then here's my Famicom Disk games. Uh, they're pretty cool. I'll go over that later. And then this is probably my most prized Famicom game. Splatterhouse Wampaku Graffiti. Um, a cute version of Splatterhouse. Who would have thought? Very interesting. All right. This video is going long. Let's hurry up. I uh, love the PlayStation 2. One of my favorite consoles of all time. Castle Shikigami 3, a good shmup. Disaster Report. This is another great one. Primarily featuring a uh, ripped off hit, Hayden Panettiere on the front. Uh, if you haven't played this series, uh, you should dive into it. They just released number four on the uh, PS4. Um, this is Dodon Pachi. Uh, is it mm, uh, Daiojo? Uh, great, great shmup. Probably the best Dodon Pachi game uh, other than the original Dodon Pachi. Happy to have this one. A little hard to find these days. Dokapon Kingdom, like a an RPG strange uh, a puzzle, not puzzle, like a board game, kind of like a. Uh, Mario Party, except in this one, like, when you beat your opponents and stuff, you can, like, change the name of their characters to, like, bad names or give them debuffs and all this sort of stuff. It's about basically trolling your, your opponents. So if you like Mario Kart, you should dive into this one. Um, or not Mario Kart, sorry, Mario Party. The Dragon Guard games. The Fatal Frame games, they're great. Plenty to say about those. God Hand. Fun, uh, beat em up kind of game. Um, tough, super hard. That game's really, man, it takes some time to, you gotta spend some time with it to get through it. Katamari Damacy, fantastic game. You roll up things in a ball and get larger and larger and increase your gravity until you start rolling up the galaxy. <laughs> Kingsfield, of course. Klonoa. Um, Mobile Height Force 2. This is a, is this, I think this is Castle Shikigami. No, is it Castle Shikigami or is it? I can't remember. It's like a rebranded, renamed uh, um, Dreamcast game or something like that. Castle Shikigami 1 or it's... I can't remember if Mobile Light Force 1 is um, Gunbird or if it's this one. It's one of those. A strange history of that. Uh, Mushahime-sama. Uh, great cave shmup on the PS2. They just released this for the Switch. Limited Run Games did a physical version of it, of course, right after I paid like a hundred bucks for this. Outrun 2006. This is the one of the expensive Xbox games. The PS version, PS2 version is almost as good um, and not like several hundred dollars. If you like those kind of arcade racers, that one's fun. Red Ninja, fun action game that no one ever talks about. Pretty pretty hard to find. The Red Star, this is another game that is a hidden gem that no one ever mentions. Um, if you ever played Cannon Spike uh, that I mentioned earlier on the Dreamcast, this game's a lot like that. Uh, I love it. It's a fantastic... Resident Evil Dead Aim, <laughs> Outbreak 2. Kind of hard to find these days. This is... um. The Sega Ages uh, release of Gunstar Heroes, and also, it's hard to see down here, Alien Soldier, very rare on the, the Genesis, or the, maybe only released in PAL territories and on the uh, um, Mega Drive in Japan, but these are all great games done by Treasure. Um, it's cool to have them on the, in a compilation, they play well on the PS2, but you have to have a Japanese PS2. All the Shadow Hearts games, never played any of them, looking forward to it. Uh... Of course, Persona 4, fantastic game. Uh, the Devil Summoner games, Digital Devil Saga, all the Silent Hill games. Um, never played the Silent Hill series, guys. Looking forward to it. I love 
I don't love. I really like survival horror. Um, I was kind of waiting until I got them all to, to dive in in case I really loved them and wanted to plow all the way through. But since I play everything randomly, that doesn't really matter. Um, Stella Deus, another interesting tactical RPG uh, done by Atlas. This one's still pretty inexpensive. Grab it while you can. Um, let me know if it's any good or if I wasted my money. <laughs> all the Suikoden games on the PS2, that is, anyway. We love Katamari. This is the sequel to Katamari Damacy. Xenosaga games, of course. Resident Evil Essentials. I believe this has... A yeah, Resident Evil 4, Resident Evil Code Veronica, and Resident Evil Outbreak. It's a fun little package. Sakura Wars. GameStop had this in stock on the PS2 all the way up past when the PS4 came out. And you could pick it up for $20. It sat there for years and years and years at $20. They couldn't sell them. They couldn't move them. They couldn't get rid of them. And everybody's like, it's a super rare game. No, it's not. Everybody just has FOMO. They just want to have it. These are Dreamcast games that are uh, like loose um, that I don't have jewel cases for. Or uh, I bought a Dreamcast off a guy that uh, he had a bunch of burned games. And so uh, the ones that I still need I am, am looking for, I... Uh, put them in these cases, these universal game case kind of things um, from the cover project just to have them on the shelf. Um, kind of like putting things in binders and stuff. Uh, but I used to have like all my NES games and most of my loose games in these universal game cases. And God, it took up so much room. Uh, I remember when I took them all out, I had like 14 35-gallon totes full of universal game cases. Uh, and it just, it, it like cut the stuff in my room by... 30% or sorry, sorry, down like from 70 down 70% to about 30% of the size. All these NES games, imagine if each one of those is like as big as two DVD cases next to each other. It's just huge. And uh, the room went from being like overflowing to feeling relatively uh, comfortable in here. Um, the GameCube, I know everybody wants to see it. It's super hot right now. <laughs> Uh, all this stuff I got when it was like in cl on clearance. I haven't bought a new GameCube game in years. Uh, Eternal Darkness, great survival horror game on the uh, on the system. Probably my favorite GameCube game. Uh, Fire Emblem, Path of Radiance. Yay. Uh, got it at Walmart on clearance when it came out uh, for like five or six bucks. Killer7. Uh, all the, the Legend of Zelda games, I think, other than the uh, Master Sword versions, version, PN03. I looked for that game for a long time because I thought it would be a lot of fun. It was anything but not that great. A Thousand Year Door, of course. Tales of Symphonia. Not a huge Game Gear, or not Game Gear, uh, GameCube collection. Just kind of like waiting for that to cool down until I dive back into it. Xbox, Arx Fatalis, uh, Call of Cthulhu. I haven't played these, but I know I know they're sought after. Um, Atagi, another Atlas game. Um, or not Atlas, but uh, FromSoft. They did Dark Souls. Pretty fun. I actually played that one. It, it's tough. Uh, here's my N64 collection. Of course, I have to have the end label so you can see what you have. Um, I have just about every N64 game I want. Uh, Conquer's Bad Fur Day and stuff. I'm not a big fan of... I know this is sacrilegious. I don't really like games that Rare made. I don't like uh, 3D platform collectathons, and most of their best games are in that style. But I do have the Ogre Battle um, 64, and uh, it's great. Sin and Punishment, which was in my most recent pickups video. Uh, my PS5 stuff. The only PS5 games I've played are Elden Ring and... Uh, Astrobot, which is on the system, uh, but I'm, I'm picking up as they come out. I'll, I'll get to them. It's a sealed Game Gear game. Uh, these little, like, LCD um, handheld remakes of like Space Invaders, Pac-Man, and stuff. I, I see these at yard sales all the time, and uh, you pick them up for a dollar. They make great bookends. Uh, I don't really want to play them, <laughs> but uh, these are like game genies and the. Uh, you know, the the Super Game Boy and action replay and stuff like that. Um, here's some Atari Jaguar stuff, complete in box. Attack of the Mutant Penguins, Doom, Flip Out. Um, 
continuing down here. Back on the back on the floor, guys. I'm like six inches off the ground. Missile Command 3D, Ultra Vortec, and then moving. I did keep these in the Universal game cases. Uh, like you can see, they, how much space take up. But uh, because the Jaguar games, they don't have end labels, and they're like curved. They're hard to stack up, and they fall over. So this actually made things a lot easier. Um, Power Drive Rally is actually a really fun Jaguar game for a racing game. And Raymond's fun too. Super hard. The game's brutal. Um, moving over here, this is kind of where I stand in my other videos. Some more little plug and, plug and plays that I use as bookends. This is the Persona 5 Take Your Heart uh, edition. Um, it's not the new one. The uh, I forget what the, the new Persona 5 version is called. Um, Royale. But uh, here we have a couple little like homebrews that I found at uh, somewhere. Um, Chrono Trigger, Magical Poppin', Secret of Mana 2, Mana. Um, and then some just kind of cheap little SNES games. Along with some Super Famicom stuff. G2. Uh, Kabuki Rocks. I don't know what that is. Phalanx. Street Fighter Zero Two Bomberman, and then another Bomberman. Uh, I basically just put these up here because I have this little holder. I wanted to use it. So here's my complete in box SNES stuff: Final Fantasy Two and Three, and Doom, and a link to the past. These are various manuals that don't have room next to like the N64 games and stuff. Supernova, Super Mario RPG. This. This is the Retrobit uh, R-Type 3 and Super R-Type collection. Uh, this was like 50 or 60 bucks. I wanted to play these games, so I picked it up. And I haven't gotten to it yet, so it's sealed. But according to my GameEye app, this thing's worth like 600 bucks now? I don't understand that. Is it really worth that? Um, have you guys played this? I don't want to open it, because sealed it's like 600 and open it's, you know, 150. Um, so, I, I don't know what the deal is with this. I want to play these games, but like... Now the collector's edition that's a reprint of the other games is more expensive than the original games. Very strange. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really... I don't know what to say about that. Here's Mother 2. That's, that's Earthbound. That's the Super Famicom version. It's not sealed, but it's like basically in mint shape. Uh, 1,400 yen. That's 14 bucks or so, guys. <laughs> I picked that up. And that was like the most expensive Super Famicom game they had it at that, that store. And then... SNES games. Act is great. Axe Lay's fun. Um, Earthworm Gem 1 and 2. Mystic Quest. Gradius 3. Fantastic shmup on the system. Maybe one of the best on the on the system. Terrible slowdown, but it actually makes the game more playable because um, it's just so over the top and um, has an insane amount of bullets on screen as all the Gradius games do. Kirby Superstar, of course. Um, Lost Vikings, Mega Man X, another copy of Phalanx. This is the, the one that's more famous for its uh, cover than anything. An old dude playing a banjo <laughs> while a spaceship flies by. Oh, the 90s. When you could get away with stuff like that. Run Saber, that's kind of an uncommon Contra style game. Same thing with Stone Protectors. It's not a Contra style game, but still pretty good. Super Metroid. I'm gonna play that again soon. I've never finished it, and uh, it's I, I wanna I wanna give it another shot. Um, I, I know I'll, I'll love it. Um, UN Squadron, another great shmup on the system. There's my boxed Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance stuff, along with a. Uh, my handheld stuff, 3DS and all that. Fire Emblem Awakening is the best handheld game I think I've ever played. Um, just unbelievably great. You can see all that there. I'm not, I'm not a huge handheld fan, guys. I, I, I play them when I have to, but I would almost always rather play the, the console version. Then up here we have a, a box Duo R and a box Turbo Graphics. You know, everybody's got to have them. Another Wii U and a Super Nintendo box and an action set. A couple of Switches and the PS4 and the Dreamcast. and Other little goodies in here. 
I have a couple boxed uh, PS2 Slims. The Last Story, fantastic. RPG on the, uh, the Wii. This is the uh, Toa Paint Plan um, collection with uh, Truxton and um, Hellfire and Fire Shark and Zero Wing. Uh, they're G Sega Genesis reproductions uh, that were released by, I think, I Am 8-Bit once again. And these, like I said, they've, they've ballooned up in price, you know, several hundred dollars for that collection, even though it just came out a little while ago. Um, we're going to go back over to this side. Here's my Vita collection. Breach and Clear. That was the very first limited run games game. Uh, I opened it because I actually wanted to play it. Um, but that's kind of what set off the whole uh, limited run games thing. Uh, happy to have that. The Danganronpa games are great. Persona 4 Golden is fantastic. Uh, I loved that game. Uh, I just said something might have been the best handheld game I've ever played. I, uh, I might take that back and go with Persona 4 Golden. It was truly and utterly fantastic. Here's my PSP stuff. Final Fantasy Tactics is one of my favorite games of all time. And uh, the PSP version is probably the best version of it. Castlevania, uh, Dracula X Chronicles, um, which they've just re-released uh, on the PS4, um, which is like Castlevania, Dracula X slash uh, Rondo of Blood and uh, Symphony of the Night together. The Gradius Collection, of course, here on the PSP. Persona and Persona 3 Portable. I know those are heavy hitters now. Uh, I miss Persona 2. I mean, they sit around for like 20 bucks forever and I never picked them up. I never picked it up, and uh, now I've missed my chance, unless I just find it somewhere cheap, which I probably won't, because nobody bought the uh, PSP. This is a... Uh, sorry, I'm like leaning against the TV, guys. This is Twin B Portable here. Uh, I bought this because I wanted to play all the Twin B games uh, before I realized I, I absolutely hate Twin B. <laughs> I really don't like the bell juggling mechanic. And to make matters worse, I got burned real bad on eBay on this one. Uh, I'll get into that on another video on a future day. It's kind of funny, but... Um, Man, oof. That was that was painful. Here's my Xbox One collection. I am not the biggest fan of the Xbox One. I basically only pick these up if they're exclusive or if I get them super cheap. Um, the Rare Replay was cool to play all the Rare games, even though I'm not a big fan of most of their stuff from the N64 and newer. This is the ReCore Definitive Edition. ReCore was like a middling kind of okay action game. They came on on the Xbox One, um, but it had some DLC and some stuff, and they made a physical version of that that they only sold in the uh, Microsoft store at the Microsoft headquarters in like Redmond, Washington. So you had to buy this from that Microsoft store. Uh, I was able to buy it online and have them ship it to me. Um, but anyway, it wasn't worth all the effort. It's not a great game. And what we know now from COVID, uh, she's obviously not wearing her mask correctly with her nose sticking out. <laughs> Here's my Xbox 360 collection. I'm a, a big fan of it. I love the 360. It, it really made me fall back in love with games. Um, I have a lot of really cool, most of the, I think I have everything I want for it. Um, if there's something I'm missing, let me know. But Akai Katana, another cave, horizontal shmup. It's pretty, pretty good. Beautiful Katamari, um, another another really good game. Bayonetta, I was one of the very first people to get uh, the 1,000 uh, gamer score uh, on this game. I 100% I completed it in like, I think something like 12 hours after release. It was <laughs> maybe 20 hours. It was like the first or second day or something. Bioshock, of course, classic and fantastic. Um, Blades of Time. This is the uh, the sequel to uh, oh I can't remember even remember the name of that game uh, X Blades or something like that. It's more designed over the the cute girl than the the gameplay. But this one I wanted to pick up because I had a feeling it was going to get kind of rare, and of course I was right. You can't really find it anywhere anymore. This is Bullet Soul. This is another one of those region free shmups on the the system. Pretty cool Bullet Witch next to it. Castlevania, Lords of Shadow. This is pretty decent. I kind of liked it. Um, Devil May Cry mixed with um, Eco. Uh, Catherine. 
great game, kind of set in the Shin Megami Tensei universe. Weird puzzle game, but man, this was a breath of fresh air when it came out. To have like a puzzle game where the main character was like in his 30s dealing with adult subject matter as opposed to just like anime teenagers in a high school fighting against ghosts, which it felt like every game was at the time. Um, darkest of Days. Truly terrible, but fun game. Um, this is a... Mark my words, this will be a this will be an expensive game one day. Uh, it's so strange. Uh, you play as a modern. No, I, I guess you play as like a. No, I think you play as a modern soldier who is sent back through various points in time to kill and alter history, including like the Civil War. So you get to run like in Civil War battles using like machine guns. It, it's strange, and there are these golden. Uh, people in the field that are like historically significant people that um, you can't kill them because if you do it'll alter time too much. So you have to avoid them. It's a strange game, but a really cool concept. Executed extremely poorly, but you can get like a thousand gamer score on it pretty easily. The Dark Souls 2 uh, Black Armor Edition Steelbook. Deadly Premonition. One of my, not my favorite games of all time, but one of the most interesting releases such a terrifying cover. When this game came out, everybody either gave it like a 10 out of 10 or like a 1 out of 10. <laughs> like It's either the worst game ever made or like the greatest game ever made. It's I'm more in the, the one of the greatest games ever made category. I think it's just a fantastic game. Uh, a lot of fun. Campy, if you like Twin Peaks, that's that's one for you. Uh, the Dodonpachi, Daifukatsu, and then um, I forget which one Resurrection is. One of these is Daifukatsu and one is Maybe Saidaiojo, Saidaiojo Daifukatsu. They're fun, hard. The Earth Defense Force games, those are uh, great if you just want to like shoot some giant bugs and kill some time. <laughs> El Shaddai, this is another one of those that's going to be hard to find one day. Um, it's kind of like a weird biblical rewriting uh, using Esau from the Bible and uh, um like he, he like fights like Lucifer and or talks with Lucifer. I, it, it's weird. It's like in an alternate universe, um, but using biblical characters, and it's kind of a like a Devil May Cry bayonetta sort of game. Uh, Escatos, fun shmup, and then uh, Escaluda too. It's a mouthful to say. More more shmups. Huge fan of them. We're gonna skip over these PlayStation game game games guys and go down and finish the Xbox the sixty, and then we'll come back to it. Uh, Eternal Sonata, this is the first Xbox 360 game I, I ever bought. Um, man, fun game. Uh, Long-winded. It starts Chopin. You're like going to Chopin's fever dream as he's dying. And geez, it's just like uh, one anime trope after another. It's like 40 minutes of dialogue and then you play for 10 minutes and that sort of game. Ginga Force. Fun kind of like try, attempt at combining an RPG with a a shmup um it sort of sort of worked uh anyway the guy that did it um released natsuki chronicle it was one of my pickups videos it's supposed to be kind of like a spiritual successor to that grand theft auto 4 which i absolutely loved um grand theft auto 5 which i thought were fantastic uh tons of guitar hero games i i play guitar professionally um so of course i, I have to be good at guitar hero 2 uh not 2 but as well um, which I'm not, by the way. I, I was able to play most of like two and three on expert um, without too much trouble, but I took too long of a break from it. <laughs> now, now I've lost all my skills, man. I don't have my skills anymore. No guitar hero skills. No bow hunting or nunchuck skills. Lollipop chainsaw. I think that one's going to get a re-release. Um, Lost Odyssey. I think this is like five DVDs or something long. It's really fun RPG on the Xbox 360. Magna Carta 2, um, which is another RPG on 360. It's kind of hard to find. I have not played it yet. Uh, Mushihime Sama Futari 1.5. Uh, talk about a mouthful. Wonderful, wonderful. Maybe maybe the best shmup of all time. 10 out of 10 game. Uh, fantastic. It took me about two months of constant plot practice to be able to one credit clear it uh, on normal difficulty. But man, if you ever watch some YouTube videos of people playing that, it's a it's a bullet hell personified. Um, then over here we have uh, 
And this is Moochie Moochie Pork and Pink Sweets. Sorry, I, I bumped the TV stand, guys. I didn't mean to. I promise. Uh, not the biggest fan of Moochie Moochie Pork. Pink Sweets is a vertical shmup um, that is like gothic Lolita mixed with like toy candy factory <laughs> themed. Uh, it's the uh, sequel to Abara, which is kind of like the sequel to Battle Garega. Um, but this game on the arcade version is basically impossible without doing like an infinite lives glitch. Like, like a, one person has one credit cleared it or two people have one credit cleared it in like 20 years of attempts. But there's an arrange mode with this that's actually a lot of fun. I think the arrange mode's like a 9 out of 10 good. Um, so I really like that, although the most of the package is not that fun. It's almost like if a like a mini game and a, a, a game you liked uh, ended up elevating that game to a, a level that made it worth playing. All right, back down to the, the ground, near part of the Dragon Guard series and, uh, and near Automata. Uh, fantastic game. Just absolutely wonderful. Some of the best music I've ever heard in a game. Operation Darkness, another hard one to find, done by Atlas. Haven't played it. Oda Medius Excellent. It's supposed to be like a sexy version of Gradius. It is uh, it is like Gradius, but it's not very sexy and it's not very much fun. I do not recommend it. Um, it's uh, really slow and boring. Raiden Fighters Aces. These are the uh, the three Raiden Fighters games, which are fantastic. Uh, they're, they're the best Raiden games by far. It's a compilation of three games. Right next to us, Raiden 4, which is not great. Record of Agorist War Zero. Um, back down here, all the way to the ground. Here we go. Man, guys, I'm getting too old for this. Here's a, another region free shmup. I think this is like Trizeal and Delta Zeal, or Zyzeal and Delta Zeal. That's a hard one to find. It's, I have it sealed, but uh, I need to play it. Spectral Force 3, another Atlas release, so you know what that means. Splatterhouse. In case you haven't played it, guys, this is a reboot of the Splatterhouse series, but this has the original Splatterhouse 1, 2, and 3 hidden in it as unlockables. Um, tornado Outbreak, which is a really interesting game. It's like Katamari, but you play as a tornado. And then uh, Wet, and then I never actually got to that. I think I got that new when it came out. I still haven't played it yet. The Witcher 2. I love The Witcher 3. Um, I haven't played Witcher 2 yet, so... Looking forward to that. Here we go. Bookend style. <laughs> Holding up these Switch games. Ooh, here's, here's a rare one for you guys. Tell me if any of you have seen this. This is Arcade Plus Ting Pingo um, on the uh, Switch. It's a, a couple of really bonkers, crazy arcade games um, mixed with a D-tier arcade game from the day called Pingo. Uh, this one's crazy. Look it up. <laughs> uh, that I, I, I'm the only one I know of that I've ever seen that had that. Um, the Binding of Isaac Afterbirth. Still, still sealed, of course. Uh, I, I will buy every copy of this game I can, can find. Uh, I love it. Um, not every copy, but I mean every release on consoles. I played the PS4 version of it, though. Danganronpa. I don't have enough to say about this series. If you like uh, Phoenix Wright kind of trial murder investigation games, these are fantastic. Denmaku Unlimited 3. Um, fun shmup. Uh, all about grazing bullets. Deadly Premonition 2. To go along with the first one, I haven't played it yet, but I'm, I'm excited to try it. Hades. Sorry, guys, I know it's hard to see these Switch games because they're just like red and it's just glare. I'll get a little bit closer so you can see. Hades, fantastic game. Game of the year when it came out. Um, another kind of roguelite, but it, it kind of eases off some of the, the more draconian and difficult uh, components of wasting your time when you have a run that you fail. You're, you're always seeming to unlock something in Hades, which is nice. What we have here? Oh yeah, that was from the, the 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 pickups video I did, Scarlet Symphony or something like that. There we go, that's better. What do we have here? Oh, Overlord. 
the, the Pocky and Rocky reshrined, the Japanese version, of course. And I'm having a hard time pushing these games in, guys, because uh, of, of this, this sort of stuff. This is what I was talking about. The, the, the extra little goodies that companies include with it, they, they just, like, they get in the way. Stop. <laughs> Put it inside the box when you ship it or don't send it at all. Rolling Gunner. Um, the Shin Megami Tensei 5. And there you go. Yamawari, the Long Night Collection. These are some really interesting. Well, there went the, uh, <laughs> the PlayStation uh, VR camera <laughs> off behind the TV. These are some really interesting uh, survival horror games. 12 from the perspective of like a little girl. They're really fun. And sorry about the camera shaking, guys. My arm's getting tired. I've been, been holding it up for an hour and a half here almost. Um, the Waifu Uncovered and Waifu Discovered games. Those were uh, selected for me to review. I have, as you can see, not played them yet. Um, but I know they are very scandalous and contain a lot of nudity and other various... Um, salacious material. Uh, I'll, I don't know if I want to play them or not, but we'll, we'll see. And these are some of the collector's editions of uh, I have for the Switch. Gris was a great, like, very artistic, quick play. Um, and of course, Super Mario Odyssey was fantastic. Below it are my, uh, it's the modern gaming station. This is the LG C1, great, great gaming TV, um, 4K with a, a sound bar. It has the little ends here, here and there. It can be broken off to do surround sound. And We have the, the PS4 normal with the PSVR and the Switch and the PS5 and the Wii U and the Xbox 360 and the PS3 and the Xbox One, all the stuff you'd expect. Um, and as you can see here, we're moving on to the, the PS4. This is probably the console I've collected for the most. Uh, it's either this or the NES, but man, there's so much to say. This It may be one of my favorite consoles of all time. Um, but I, I have like a lot of good stuff for it. I, I, more than I'll be able to talk about. We could spend we could spend hours on this stuff. There's the Aleste collection. Astrobot, 10 out of 10 game. Best VR game I've ever played. Um, A Symptom of Limited Runs, FOMO. Here's Blasphemous. They released by Limited Run Games. And then, like two years later, they released a retail version of it with all the DLC and patches included. <laughs> it's like pointless to have that. Bloodborne, which I love. I mentioned earlier. This is the uh, Cotton... Uh, cotton 2, Cotton Boomerang... Uh, Guardian Force Saturn Tribute. This game is unplayable. It's at like 11 frames of lag. It's so slow and choppy, It's it's you can't do anything. And then Cotton Rock and Roll. The Danganronpa Trilogy. Um, like I mentioned, Danganronpa Re uh, Decadence is the, the new version. Um, but that fantastic series, I can't, can't get enough of it. Oh man, I get to put my arm down, arms down, guys. So, so tired. Okay, Dear Esther, um, a great, one of the first and most well-known just walking simulators, but I thought it was a great game. Disaster Report 4, I played that last summer. A lot, a lot of fun. So there's anything really unusual in here. Here's the... Nope. The game Paradise Cruise and Mix, um, a really cool shmup where you're you're flying through an old arcade shooting like bubble gum and hot dogs and stuff. <laughs> the uh, Gravity Rush remastered is a Vita game, and they released this remastered version physically only for sale on Amazon and didn't announce it. Nobody got it. But when I bought this at the time, it was the most expensive uh, PS4 game I'd ever purchased outside of a collector's edition um paid like 75 bucks for it open uh and used uh well, i think it was 20 when it was new this is uh the twin shark and fire shark uh toy plan 
shmups, um, same, same, same is, I think the Japanese name of it. Kitsui Deathtony, another fantastic shmup. Um, if you have played Kitsui, it's considered to be one of the best shmups of all time. Uh, and that this is the definitive version of it. Last of Us. Love these games. Love them so much. I liked Part 2 maybe even better than the first one. I know a lot of people aren't going to agree with me on that. There's a lot of games to go over here, guys. Sorry. I wish I could speak about every one of them for like 20 minutes, but it's getting a... Getting a little long-winded here. I'm going to start going a little bit faster. We're going to do some videos, I think, where we'll go back through and go through the collections completely and let you see what's going on. A lot of these games I'm pointing out in here are not... Um, I'm not pointing them out because they're the best. It's because they are they have Japanese end labels, and I want you to know what they are. Um Here's one I will point out, though. Sayonara Wild Hearts. Super underrated game. Fantastic experience. Uh, uh, dealing with um, the struggles that someone can go through when they've, they've been depressed for a long time. And uh, it's sort of like a, uh, an allegory of, of finding your way back out into the world and finding joy again. It's, it's, it's touching and extremely well done with fantastic music and a wonderful art style. Shadow Complex is a fantastic uh metroidvania game um that limited runs put out put out uh the re-release of it what is this oh sisters royale another shmup i haven't played it's trying to point out what the japanese was for you guys skipping over the playstation one we'll go back and do that right after this There's a lot, man. There's, I think I'm getting close to like 400 PlayStation 4 games. This is the Tiger Heli uh, Toy Plane Arcade Collection. If you have any questions about any of these guys, let me know. I'll, I'll be happy to answer your questions. Any engagement is, uh, it's exciting for me. If you like Castlevania, these are the bloodstained. Curse of the Moon, um, kind of spinoffs from Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Uh, I was a Kickstarter backer, so I have this cool hollow foil sort of container. I love this game. Uh, love Castlevania Symphony of the Night, and that, that kind of scratched that itch. That I've needed scratch for a long time. What's back here? Uh oh, oh boy, that's another great game. This one's getting hard to find these days. This one's hot. I haven't played it yet. Um, the Liar Princess and the Blind Prince. Same thing with The Messenger. It's supposed to be a great um, kind of Ninja Gaiden uh, side-scrolling action game. And we're back down towards the floor. I have a lot of of these collector's editions, especially for shmups. I pretty much buy every shmup that comes out that I know about. And typically, if it has a collector's edition, I get the collector's edition. There's the Yakuza games, which I've played the first one. And I'm a huge fan. I really want to play those. Uh, that's a boxed, Vec boxed Vectrex. Pretty cool. Here's my little mini Symphony of the Night shrine. We have the... PlayStation version, and then back there tucked away is the soundtrack, and there's the Sega Saturn version, and then we have a couple of sealed uh, TurboGrafx-16 games, Ninja Spirit and uh, Yo Bro. Yo Bro, don't use drugs, bro. Uh, if you saw over on there, on the other side of the room, I have a uh, Ninja Spirit, uh, just in the jewel case. I wanted to play it, and I don't want to crack that open. And then I know you guys will be excited about this. Haunting Grounds and Rule of Rose being protected by Rob the Robot here. Um, that I paid like modern retail price, around 400 bucks for this. This I picked up when it was like 180 And some other little heavy hitters here. Earthbound, that's a boxed Castlevania 4 and a boxed Chrono Trigger. Great games, of course. And then an Ikaruga. 
little shrine along with the Japanese version of Final Fantasy Tactics. Great, fantastic, fantastic shmup if you've never played Ikaruga. Um, you'll see how much I like it in just a minute. But Let's go back and do the, uh, the PlayStation 1 games. I've got some real kind of heavy hitters on the PlayStation 1. Alundra. Oh, I wish it would focus better. Brigandine. Great. Oh, man, this is a great uh, sort of a tactical strategy RPG. I loved it. Uh, just really a pleasure to play. This one is hard to find. It took me years to find this. This is uh, Serofines, uh, which is cellophanes in Japanese. This is a... Like, it's a compilation of, like, early-style, uh, like, 8-bit computer-style games. Super hard to find this. Uh, like, if you just try to eBay, like, cellophanes, <laughs> like, it just shows, like, every other game packaged in cellophane. And if you put PlayStation, it'll say just, like, PlayStation game still in the cellophane. Uh, so I had to, like, spell it, like, using English to finally find it. And even then, it took forever to find. Clock Tower, of course. Nailed it. Oh, let's see here. Let's keep going. Elemental Gear Bolt. Einhander. Cool shmup. I uh, only played it for a little bit. Um, I'm going to get into it eventually. This. I know it's sought after. It's supposed to be like the Holy Grail light gun game. Um, I haven't played it yet. Uh, excited about it. I picked it up when it was 50 bucks, which at the time I was like, man, this is going to... This is going to, like, break me. <laughs> $50 at that time was a lot of money. Still is, but um, I am not. I wouldn't stress over it because I've prioritized collecting more than I did back then. Gekio Shooting King, a really good shmup uh, that people are sleeping on this on the PlayStation. Um, it's still relatively inexpensive, unlike every other PlayStation game that's just climbing in value daily. Um, the Two Kings Field games... Kudel Kudelka. I have a hard time saying that. That's the. This is the first game in the Shadow Heart series, guys, if you haven't played it. It's also like a flipping $300 game. I don't know if it's worth it. I just picked it up not that long ago. This one, you'll learn more about this in another video. This is probably my best find of all time. I'll tell the story about that some other day, but definitely a heavy hitter on the system. Um, Definitely a heavy hitter. And then I kind of hate how the PlayStation games are split up like this, but it's just the structure of these uh, these uh, shelves. They're Shadow Tower. I spent a long time looking for that one. Uh, that's a spinoff of the early Kingsfield series, uh, which is kind of a part of the Dark Soul series. Silent Hill, Silhouette Mirage... That game's uh, more expensive than it is good. I'm not the hugest fan of that one. Sweet it in, sweet it in two. I like sweet it in two a lot. Everybody does. Um, however, I think sweet it in one was a better game. Tactics Ogre, Tales of Destiny, Tales of Destiny two, Thunder Force five, Vampire Hunter, Vandal Hearts, Vandal Hearts two, all the Wild Guard games or Wild Arms games. Uh, Xena Gears. I have a lot of the, the PlayStation 1 stuff. Uh, it was one of my favorite consoles of all time. Maybe still is. Um, then moving over to the Genesis stuff. Let me tell you about this. Preface it. <laughs> you can see like right in here. Dude, dusting Sega Genesis games is such a pain because of the concave nature of the top of the boxes. You can't get like a Swiffer Duster in there. And then these hand tags... Like, block you from being able to reach in with your hand and do anything. It's really annoying, and they always look dusty, and I kind of hate it, but... Um, anyway, before we do that, up at top, Breath of the Wild, Box, Box 32X, GameCube, Saturn, uh, Toad, Treasure Tracker on the Wii U. <laughs> those are unopened. I got those in clearance. Calibri, this is the probably the one everybody wants to see. Um, it's fine. It's basically just Echo the Dolphin with a hummingbird. Uh, it still is obtuse and hard to figure out as Echo is. Alicia Dragoon. When I first started collecting seriously, this game was 10 bucks, 
And I was like, that's overpriced. I'm going to wait for it to drop. I think I picked it up and I paid like $120 for it. Should have. I should have let FOMO get me uh, at the beginning on that one. Contra Hardcore. Fun. Super hard. Guy R is. Ghouls and Ghosts. Sorry about the uh, glare, guys. It's pretty tough. Landstalker is a fun game. Lightning Force. I just was able to one credit clear that. That's going to be coming up in a future video. Mutant League Football. Philios. Uh, this game gets more credit than it deserves. It's it's fine. It's I like the Greek sort of theme of it uh, and the girl and it's really cute, but man, it's kind of boring. It's like they they spent all their money making the first level and then didn't know what to do. <laughs> all the Sonic games. Splatterhouse 2. Sunset Riders. Thunder Force 2 and 3. Hyperstone High. Just getting a, a re-release on the... Uh, in the TMNT Cowabunga Collection. Troubleshooter. This one I found at a convention. And uh, the guy didn't know what he had. And I was like, oh man, that, that's kind of a rare game. I think it's worth like 30 bucks. <laughs> and uh, he, he was selling it for like 15 or so. And I told him it was worth more than that and offered him 20 Only to go back later and check and it was like $150. I felt bad. I tried to find him the next day, but he, he wasn't there. Action 52, again, this time on the Genesis. i got to compare the two. And these are um, loose games that have been put in Universal Game Cases. There's a few that are tucked away up here. Um, there's Panorama Cotton. This is a, a homebrew version of it. I wanted to play it for a review. Um, and I did buy the, uh, the re-release of this by Strictly Limited Games, but like everybody else, I'm just waiting on it to come in. Moving on to the PS3. 3D Dot Game Heroes, of course. Picked that one up when it was new. I just had a feeling it was going to be hard to find, and of course it was. Caladrius Blaze. Got a PS4 re release, um, but uh, the PS3 version is like pretty much exactly the same. I, don't, I didn't want to splurge to buy the PS4 version if I already had the PS3 version. Dragon Guard 3 to go along with the. The Nier collection and all. What is this? Oh, yeah. These are the Dungeons & Dragons Chronicles of Mystaria arcade games or whatever. This got a physical release in Japan, but um, it was only released uh, digitally in the United States. And Of course, mine's still sealed. Uh, I want to play that with my wife one day. I'm really going to play with my daughter. She'll be old enough to play it by the time I get to it. Folklore. One of the really rare games, not rare, but sought after games on the system that I think is worth the price. Really good. The Eco and Shadow of Colossus collection, fantastic. What can you say about it? Journey is a super impactful and meaningful game and one of the best indie games ever made. Uh, I don't have enough good to say about that game. This is Ketsui on the PS3. Um, I had the PS4 version. It was Ketsui Death to Me. Uh, what is this? Oh, Memorunkun Curse? This is like a spinoff of Pocky and Rocky. Uh, another game that nobody knows came out on the PS3. PS3 is region free, guys. You can you can play any game on it. Uh, the Puppeteer. Another one everybody's seeking after right now. Here's the uh, Persona 4 uh, Arena Ultimax. This is sealed. Um, I got this at GameStop like two years ago. Ten bucks. They just had it sitting in the back. Uh, sold it to me. Um, Sealed, like sort of like a used game. Now it's who knows how much money. Here's a ultra rare PAL game. Um, short piece, Cinco or Renko Sukagimi's longest story. Uh, this is a compilation done by like uh, four different Japanese uh, auteurs who are famous for anime and games and whatever. And there's like a video game in here, and then there's three anime shorts and one of them won like the academy award for best anime short so that's a cool one to pick up if you can actually find it anywhere silent hill downpour shadows of the damned which is a, a decent game um tears of tiara that one's getting hard to find but man i only got about 10 hours into that one i was just like i'm done with this too much talking 
And then this is the Japanese version of the Eco Shadow of the Colossus collection. This is what they got. Beautiful with an art book and two separate games. And then this is what we get. Sweet. <laughs> right? Uh, here's my daughter's little gaming nook. Lots of kid stuff. Minecraft, Pokemon, Animal Crossing, Yoshi, Just Dance, Lego, Enchanted, Tangle, what you know. She's a she's an eight-year-old girl. <laughs> I end up playing a lot of that stuff with her. Here's the Master System stuff. I like the Master System. Uh, I did have one when I was little. I bought it instead of a Genesis. The Genesis was 120 bucks new, and you could get the Master System for 80 bucks new. And I opted for the Master System. Uh, man, what a bad decision. <laughs> the Ninja's a fun game. Uh, kind of like Akari Warriors. Uh, the Japanese version of this game, uh, you play as a female ninja, but they changed it to a male for the United States, which is, you know, signs of the patriarchy. Here's some MSX stuff. The Carnivore, which is like the MSX multi-cart, which is pretty much the hardest piece of hardware I've ever used in my entire life. Um, we got the Aleste games. Here's the first Aleste, the second. Aleste Gaiden. This is like a homebrew. This game was only released, I think, in like a magazine or something. Uh, and then a couple of homebrews, Kyokugen and Pleasure Hearts. Uh, MSX is an underrated console slash computer. Um, if you haven't heard of it or played it, you should try it out. It was really Microsoft's first thing they ever made, um, predating Windows. And then the, the Wii Baroque. That one's getting hard to find, too. Castle of Shikigami 3. I used to see this everywhere. People saying it's like one of the rarest games on the system. I don't know. Coraline. Another uncommon game. Fire Emblem, Radiant Dawn, uh, loose copy. I picked up a Wii at a yard sale and was about to flip it on eBay. And I was like, oh, I need to check it and see if, uh, if it has a game in it. And it actually had... I know you guys aren't going to believe me, but I promise it's true. It actually had Radiant Dawn in it. And so um, I printed off like the weird alternate PAL artwork because I didn't want people to think that I was trying to... Um, like counterfeit a, a, a real uh, version of the game. Fragile Dreams. This is a a very uncommon game on the Wii. Hard to find. Uh, I haven't played it. I haven't played about a third of these games, guys. Sorry. I'm, I'm getting to them. I promise. I promise. The Wii, The House of the Dead 2 and 3 and Overkill. These are these are fun rail shooters. And the, the Wii really excelled at that. Um the Metal Slug Anthology again, which I had like the Neo Geo version, uh, limited run games, PS4 Neo Geo ripoff version, um, Metroid Prime. I've, I haven't, I've yet to play those. Muramasa. That's a, that's another good one here. This is a, done by the same people that did like Odin Sphere and Princess Crown. Very cool. And the No More Heroes games, Okami, Pandora's Tower. Then moving down here, we got the couple more railgun games. The Saint is uh pretty much the worst game I've ever played in my entire life. Silent Hill Shattered Memory, Sin and Punishment. Xenoblade Chronicles. I pre-ordered it. This is like I have the original version with the art book. I was like the only guy that did it before they re-released it. Then my Wii U collection. I'm almost have every Wii U game I wanted. I really wanted to find Devil's Third, but I just it never came across it. Um, man, I'm like I'm in the bottom of the the room, guys. I'm like three inches off the floor against my arcade cabinet. <laughs> Sorry for the strange uh, Dutch angle here. Um, anyway, and then here, saying an Ikaruga fan, this is a extension arcade cabinet uh, that I had made. With custom artwork on it but it's ikaruga themed on one side it has if you ever played ikaruga your ship flips polarity from light to dark so it has the dark ship on one side and then the light ship on the opposite um they did a fantastic job with this uh i have it rigged up there's a cable that an hdmi cable and a uh, usb cable that runs like back around the back of this room and behind these cabinets over to here and it's tucked away under the, the thing. But I can plug my uh, consoles over here into this TV and connect it to this um, 
set of buttons here and I can play my shmups uh, on this screen uh, like arcade style uh, which I prefer to do instead of having them over here and also I used to like take my consoles and like move them into this thing back and forth and sliding it in and out and messing with it was just too much so the long HDMI cable and the long uh, USB cable really helps out with that and right now I have like a RetroPie in there running a, like an arcade emulator sort of thing. Uh, my daughter and her friends play this more than, than I do, but it, it's still pretty fun. It works really well. And then above it, of course, we have the PS3 and the Sega CD and another. That's actually a, I can't remember if it's sealed or not. Maybe it is sealed. A PS2 Slim, Sega Master System Genesis, Model 2 and 1 and Xbox and a little football game there. And then over here, these are some more of those indie box games. This is like that subscription service where they'd mail you a PC game every month. And man, they got some good ones in there. They like they had Axiom Verge before anybody else, Banner Saga, Dusk and Elysian Tail, um, Freedom Planet, Guacamelee, Hollow Knight. Like they had Hollow Knight physically out years before uh, anybody else had it on consoles. Huge, Oton, Lovely Planet, Lovers in Dangerous Space Time, Nuclear Throne, Risk of Rain, like all of these came out through them. And this is a little handheld vacuum to catch little dust particle stuff here and there. Stanley Parable they had before everybody else, Towerfall, uh, Torchlight. I mean, they, they, they knew it was up. I wish more people would subscribe to it. And it's full of all kinds of like interesting collectibles. They put everything on like either a press disc or a USB drive that was custom and decorated with the art from the game and they had like maps and manuals and figurines and goodies and all kinds of stuff it was really cool um, this is my wife's switch stuff uh well organized as you can see she doesn't really play it very much um but it's all down here in case she wants it uh and i just kind of leave it there don't mess with it i don't want to i don't want to go down that road <laughs> then here's my one and only Arcade one-up console, or not console, arcade machine. They're so small. I mean, compare it like to a, look at that, compared to a full-size arcade. But I, I liked the arcade one-up one stuff when it first came out. It started to get really pricey now, but this is the only one that really interested me. It has Final Fight, um, 1944, Ghost and Goblins, and Strider, like really good set of games. And uh, my daughter, my eight-year-old, loves this thing. Like she plays Final Fight in 1944 uh, all the time. She doesn't really like Ghosts and Goblins, and she doesn't like Strider, um, but she loves Final Fight in 1944. I'm, I'm proud of her <laughs> uh, for doing it. And it's fun. I've enjoyed it as well. I played it with my friend. I was able to one credit clear 1944 and, um, and do fairly well in Final Fight. Uh, Ghosts and Goblins, that's another story. This is a storage closet where I keep like the controllers and stuff. Here's another one of those Crossmac art posters. Uh, this is Sif, the great gray wolf from Dark Souls. Fantastic character. PlayStation 5 box. Got to display it. You can't get them anywhere. <laughs> uh, Virtual Boy, uh, PlayStation marquee. Um, then here's my Virtual Boy games. There's just a, a few in here. Galactic Pinball, Mario Clash, Mario Tennis, Red Alarm, Teller Boxer, Wario Land, and Vertical Force. I would love to have... Uh, jack bros you know like everybody else but uh, such is life then Game boy advance stuff i i don't really want to go through all this uh it'd be too hard to see on camera but this is how i keep it displayed this is you know game boy stuff here and uh, i'm not a huge handheld guy but uh like i said these used to be in universal game cases so you could see them better but uh man they're like they just take up so much space like this was all this stuff here like basically took up half of one of these large shelves, like when they're in those universal game cases. So you see this is much more compact. Here's my hygrometer and thermometer, so you can see what temperature is. 75 degrees in here right now, and I'm in a wool tuxedo, sweating like crazy. 52 degrees humidity, or 52% humidity, so it's hot in here. Um, of course, I have everything turned off, so you can hear me better. Uh, PSVR headset, another Vectrex. This is the one I play. And then here's the an oddity. I know this is a, the PSX. This is like a PlayStation 1 and 2 slash DVR that could record gameplay footage. Uh, these are 
pretty rare. Um, they're really a beautiful console. Uh, the hard drive is encoded on every one of these, and uh, you can't replace it. And I think like every one of these that exists in the entire world is basically broken, unless you mod them. Anyway, I picked this up from a, a, a buddy in a deal, and it's sitting here. Um, and then we have to have the Smo and Ornstein uh, poster, once again, done by Crossmac. I really love these. Um, so in case you guys... Oh, and this down here, I forgot to show this. This is where I keep like the hookups and various things. And there's the Death Stranding poster. In this big spot here, I used to have a long uh, shelf where I had all my consoles, all my retro stuff hooked up to this TV. And one, every time I went to use it, I had like five switchers. I had like, like I had a coding sheet. If I want to use the N64, I have to like press number one on this box, number two on this box, number three on this box. And uh, I was always having issues where like something would come unplugged or somebody would mess with something or worse yet, my daughter would like crawl behind it. She, when she was younger, she would slide it out and it was about uh, a little bit taller than my knees. Um, but for her, it was waist high and it was like a counter and she would want to play restaurant all the time. And so she would like come like say, come look what I did. And she would stand behind it on like the snake uh, swarm of cables. And I was ready for getting like shocked and she'd be like, let's play restaurant. And uh, so it just, I'm, I got a, like a baby, <laughs> little kid. I don't want them messing with that stuff. There's too many plugs and wires back there. So my solution was, and I hope you guys like it. I, I like it. I got these really nice glass front cabinets. And I just put my consoles in here. We have like the Atari 2600 in here, and I'll, I'll open these up so you can see it a little bit better. Um, the Atari 2600, Japanese Saturn, the white version, the Dreamcast, the 3DO. What do we have down here? Another Saturn, of course. The uh, the 60 gig backwards compatible PS3. Uh, there's a space right there. That's, I think, where my Super Nintendo is, and it's in the uh, the TV over there at the moment. Uh, Master System, Pong console, the watermelon N64. Love that thing. Uh, Jaguar. There it is. Japanese PlayStation 2 and a U.S. PlayStation 2. And then just a slim PS3 and a PS1. That's just kind of like overflow down there. And then we have the uh, PC Engine Duo R, TurboGrafx-16. Original Xbox, Top Loader, NES, the Twin Famicom. This plays Famicom games and Disk System games, and in television. Here's the Tower of Power, almost uh, Sega Genesis 32X, <laughs> Sega CD combo. Uh, this is my consoleized Neo Geo MVS that plays the arcade games. It's rigged up to use those joysticks you saw, like right there, or um, uh, Sega Saturn controllers, uh, the GameCube with all the Wave Birds and the Game Boy Advance attachment. And uh, here's another MSX computer. And then an empty spot. I have barely any room to put anything. Um, and then, like I said, over here, all the hookups to those consoles are in there. And I, I put them in like little Ziploc bags. So if I want to play, you know, the PlayStation 2, I just go over there and find the bag that has the PlayStation 2 stuff. I go over here and plug it into the TV and go, go for it. Um, and so it makes it a lot easier in, in some sense. It's a lot more work to get out of console, but I don't have kids back there like walking over my cables and unplugging stuff and plugging stuff in. And um, I like fried a, a, a Sega Genesis because she like unplugged the one cable from something and tried to plug it into another because she didn't want to get in trouble or she thought she'd be up. I would be upset she was back there. And I mean, even though I told her like, you know, a million times not to do it, <laughs> I, was, I wasn't upset with her, but it, uh, it, it was more hassle than it was worth. And uh, but anyway, that's it, guys. Thank you. This is a almost two hour long video. Jeez. I uh, hope you guys learned some stuff and saw what was down here and I hope you liked it. Here's one more view for you. Um, let me know what else you want to see. I can go through and... Uh, and talk about each console, or I can go by each shelf, or things like that, or we can not worry about it and never mention it ever again. And uh, I, uh, I appreciate your time if you made it all the way through this. 
boy, you're a trooper. Uh, I am super parched. My voice is very tired, as you can hear. And my arm is killing me. I've been holding this cell phone up the entire time. Uh, but I hope you liked it, guys. Thanks so much for hanging in there with me. Thank you for all the support. And uh, there'll be another new episode uh, a week from when this video drops. And it'll be a not so... Uh, over the top and long and uh so there's a perfect time right now have some champagne i know you're all sitting there in your your cocktail gowns and your uh your tuxedos so it's time for the after party guys and uh thank you again take it easy